On business live will address issues raised in COVID-19 Auditor General's report. That's an assurance from the Finance Ministry. We'll bring you details. Also, state interest and governance authority concludes probes into financial infractions and malfeasance by state-owned enterprises captured in the 2021 audit report. Plus, customers of U-Track Savings and Loans besiege Casa Branch to withdraw their savings. I have been selling someone else's bread to make some money for my children. I came to save my money with them and they didn't say anything and they left. They should give me my money. The Ministry of Finance has assured that it will address all issues raised in the report on the audit of the government's COVID-19 expenditure by the Auditor General. The report revealed some infractions in the government's expenditure for COVID-19 from March 2020 to June 2022. Some of the corrupt practices that were uncovered include the purchase of 26 ambulances that were never delivered, paying unapproved fees by the Information Ministry to its own staff as COVID insurance and paying for $80 million worth of vaccines by the government that was never delivered amongst others. Responding to the report, the Ministry of Finance stated that the findings provide the government an opportunity to implement the recommendations made by the Auditor General. The state interest and governance authority, SIGA, has concluded a probe into the financial infractions and malfeasance by state-owned enterprises captured in the 2021 audit report. This is to meet the directive by the president to ascertain the causes of the 17.4 billion irregularities flagged by the Auditor General. The Chief of Staff, Rima Opari, received the report on the president's behalf. There's more on this report. According to the 2021 Auditor General's report, some state-owned enterprises lost a total of 17.4 billion cities as a result of what the report described as failure by these SOEs to do proper financial reporting and internal auditing. The State Interest and Governance Authority, SIGA, conducted investigations into the development and found that lack of proper procurement processes misappropriation of funds, lack of collaboration with internal auditors, and low monitoring and supervision are to blame for the infractions and malfeasance captured by the Auditor General. Ambas we apologize for that infraction. We'll be bringing you more on that later in subsequent bulletins. Now, Ghana's international creditors have started pushing for more details about the composition of Ghana's debts. This is the latest request from the Paris Club following the government's request for reprofiling of the country's debts and possible cancellation. George Riafi has the rest of the story. The request is coming from the creditors' committee that has been formed by the Paris Club to look into Ghana's application. The committee wants to get fine details about which countries Ghana is indebted and the terms of the loans. This would help to better reconcile the numbers for any action going forward. The development may help in understanding the true position of Ghana's indebtedness to the group of 20 developed countries' members. There is the framework that has been established with the full support coming from the IMF for countries that have requested for debt cancellation. It is believed that if government is able to deal with this challenge, then maybe the February ending target set by the finance minister, Ken Ofriata, to reach a deal with the Paris Club in terms of their commitment to cancel Ghana's debt may come to pass. Getting this deal may also help Ghana 
in securing the IMF board approval for the country's program to turn around the economy. The Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry has resolved to petition Parliament's Select Committee on Mines and Energy over the increase in utility tariffs by the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission. According to the Chamber, the decision follows several appeals to the PURC review the tariffs for large-scale businesses since the current economic crisis is already biting hard on their operations, thereby forcing them, or most of them, to look elsewhere for cheaper tariffs while some others fold up. President of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Clement Oseyamwako, says they'll continue to push for a downward review for their members. The Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry's concerns follow a similar plea by the Association of Ghana Industries to the PURC to consider reviewing the tariffs for industries. The Chamber argues that the current economic crisis is pushing most of their members out of business. They contend Though utility companies need to recover costs to sustain the operations, the effect of the utility tariff increase could be dire for both industry and the utility companies. Speaking to Joy Business after an engagement with the PURC, President of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Clement Seamwaku, said they will lobby Parliament to help adjust the tariffs for large-scale businesses. Laws are made by men. If it's gazetted, this is not the first time that um, prices have gone up, that it, it has not come down. We always make um, our voice known to them, and sometimes they look at the window and they adhere to that. Since government is the main stakeholder with these uh, utility companies, there's a way out that we can forge ahead and get it done. They will have to look at it. If it has to go back to parliament for them to look at it, we'll do that. We'll lobby with the parliamentary select committee and all those that matters to make sure that we will not keep to the price. But in a sharp response, Executive Secretary of the PURC, Dr. Ishmalaka, said nothing can be done about it for now since the tariffs have been gazetted to take effect from February. This adjustment, uh, the decision has been made and it has been gazetted. Uh, it's a law. So for now, uh, Nothing can be done on the part of PURC. However, there will be other quarterly adjustments. So we, what we are doing is to establish the protocols for engagement. To see that uh, we take, and let me also add that even before we engage the chamber, uh, PURC on its own had uh, made putting measures uh, to protect industry. One of them was that we have been able to reverse the structure for the first time for SMEs to pay lower than those in the residential sector. Within a period of less than six months, electricity tariffs have shot up significantly on two occasions, 26.6% in September 2022 and 29.9% for this quarter, totaling 56.5%. Now, customers of the castle-based EU truck savings and loans this morning besieged the bank's premises to withdraw their savings. According to the angry customers, the financial institution has remained closed for the past two months, and efforts to get bank officials to heed to their concerns have proved unsuccessful. Some of them said they have deposited amounts ranging from 200 Ghana cities to 20,000 Ghana cities. My money is over 16,000 cities and my daughter's 3,000 cities. So it is more than 200,000 Ghana cities. I'm taking my money. They should give me my money, else I'll look for any means to take my money. They should bring my money. I was saving it. My child has finished school. I was going to use the money to pay fees and now the money is locked up. Time is up and I haven't received any money to pay. I am a single parent and I have four children. I have been selling someone else's bread to make some money for my children. I came to save my money with them and they didn't say anything and they left. They should give me my money. My contribution is 6,000 Ghana cities and my sister's is 2,000 Ghana cities. So we beg them. We have suffered to save that money. So we are pleading to them to have mercy and pay us our money.
Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry Herbert Krapa is urging investment authorities on the African continent to form partnerships to support businesses on the continent. According to him, the dream of making Africa one market can only be realized if authorities charged by the government work together in promoting their businesses. Herbert Krapa was speaking to the Maiden Assembly of African Investment Promotion Authorities in Accra. The summit is one major platform by the Ghana Investment Promotion Center and other investment bodies on the continent to rally support for foreign direct investments into Africa. The program under the theme, the role of the IPAs in facilitating intra-African trade is aimed at finding common grounds to deal with challenges of low foreign direct investment flows within the continent. According to a Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Herbert Krapa, working together with a common framework, is the surest way to ensure that intra-Africa trade becomes successful. It's the fact that you are working together, that you recognize that if you came together as a body to put your energies and your resources together, we would be able to make more gains for the continent and for our member states than if we saw our roles as individual ones. And that is very important also, because once we are working together and we are speaking to each other and we are aligning resources, we are able to prosecute an agenda that fits directly into Africa's Agenda 2063. And I believe that um, that is, is, is important and it's worth mentioning. The Chief Executive for the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant, believes the time has come for the continent to pay some attention to value addition to industry. The African continent is probably growing faster than any other region in the world. I mean, I had the big surprise when in 2021, um, in looking at our numbers, fintech alone, fintech transactions in Ghana alone was approximately $120 billion. We would have wished that our GDP was $120 billion. But we can do that if we work together and look at the opportunities that we have on the continent, such that the minerals in Ghana can be used anywhere on the continent. The minerals in Southern Africa, in Northern Africa, Eastern Africa, and the rest of Western Africa can be traded amongst ourselves and optimized amongst ourselves for our own benefit. And therefore, we have created an internal economy that will benefit us all. Meanwhile, Executive Director for the World Association of Investment Promotion Agencies, Ismail Ersahin, said Africa is becoming the next investment destination, hence the need for policy frameworks to attract more FDIs. Graduates of the University College of Management Studies, ECOMS, have been urged to utilize the knowledge acquired to create jobs. President of the Wisconsin International University College, Professor Obey Miracle, said it is time Graduates create more jobs to reduce the unemployment rates in the country. There's more on the following report. In his speech as guest speaker at the 12th Congregation Ceremony of UCOMS, Professor Obain Miracle urged the graduates to exhibit high levels of dedication, accountability, integrity, and honesty in all their professional careers, as well as complement government's efforts in socioeconomic development. Your people and the country have made you made in you a great investment. You are an asset whose contribution to nation building is much expected and will be much appreciated. Strive for continuous professional development. Complement government efforts in the realm of employment by striving to become your own employers and you will appreciate the dignity of labor. Mr. Chairman, permit me to caution my dear graduates that life is not as rosy as it appears out there. Vice Chancellor, University of Education, Winneba, Professor Mauto Avoke, in a speech read on his behalf, charged the graduates to be part of the solution to Ghana's problems. Meanwhile, consulting rector of UCOMS, Professor George Kankam, said, the school's curriculum is industry relevant to make the students marketable. Despite the global recession and its attendant challenges, UCOMS has initiated, me initiated measures with human face to make life manageable to students in the form of response, reasonable academic fees and flexible mode of payment of fees for students. 
In addition, UCOM as a private institution has started to collaborate with other higher educational institutions and has signed memoranda of understanding, MOU, with sister institutions to restructure curricula and make them more industry relevant and responsive to the needs of industry in the new normal and to make our students more marketable. Chairman of the University Council, Professor Vladimir Entridanso, in an interview said, UCOMS will be introducing new programs in areas which will benefit the Ghanaian society. UCOMS is a specialized kind of university college, you know, in basically in uh, the business uh, world, auditing, accounting, um, human resource management, and uh, uh, supply chain management, etc., etc. We are again unique in the sense that we are we are bringing out new programs, very new programs, in areas where we think will benefit the Ghanaian society. And I think the uh, vice chancellor has done so well in that area that this year, after COVID. We are seeing the need to expand and to diversify. Diversification is very important for every university. If you don't diversify, you will be churning out your graduates who are, one, unemployable because the economy does not need them, and then unemployable. Charles Dakwa, who pursued BSc in accounting, was adjudged the overall best graduating student. He also won the Founders Excellence Award. Mr. Dakwa delivered the valedictory address on behalf of his court and expressed profound gratitude to the university community and loved one. There were times some of us thought of giving up. At a point, some were disappointed. In the decision to come to school, some lost interest and chose new directions in life. Studies to some of us were really challenged as we found it difficult adjusting to the way of learning due to the coronavirus. But with all this, my heart is filled with joy because our sacrifice and toils have, been in, have not been in vain. Indeed, we have made it. As Aristotle said, the root of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. 15 of the graduates had first class, 80 second class upper, 36 and 4 had second class lower and third class respectively. Still to come, Joy Business Van features Quindafred Payroll Services Limited, which is meeting the needs of businesses in payroll management during these austere times. We'll be right back. But for Business Live, I'm Amisi Thompson. Up next is BBC Focus in Africa. <laughs> 